Hello everyone, uh, now we continue the lesson 2.6 Okay, there's a force So from here, I think you all read already, is it? So I want to start my lesson Okay, let's see here the board I do some uh, summary about this topic Okay, first one we see the force Okay, now we see the force, for sure got definition Okay, let's see the notes, notes also here You can highlight Okay, first one Force means anything that can change the state of the rest or moving of an object moving in a straight line. That means when you apply the force, the object that will change the situation. Example, the object is rest. When you apply the force, the object may be moving. Okay, another thing is object is moving in a straight line. Maybe you kick the ball, then you find the ball that change the direction. So that one we also call it that is a force. Okay, so now I want to introduction some of the example of the force. Okay, first one from the notes, the example is a gravitational force. Okay, let's see the gravitational force. Okay, there's a force that pulling by the earth, then go to the center. So from here, they got explanation, they also got diagram. You can see the diagram I show you. Okay, that one is a diagram. Uh, they show about the water flow. Okay, from your notes, but I show the diagram is an apple. They fall down from the tree. Okay, you see the diagram, is it? Okay, now I explain for you. Gravitational force, actually, there's an attractive force. From where? From the earth. They pull all the objects, go to the center. So this one we call example of the uh, gravitational force. Okay, second one, there's a weight. Okay, everybody, they know there's a weight. Okay, from the diagram, they show you weight. Gravitational force that causes all the objects have the weight because of the gravitational force. So every object, they must have the weight and the magnitude and strength of the gravitational force acting to an object. Okay, now we're going to see number three. Number three is saying normal force. Normal force refer to the force that is a perpendicular perpendicular to the surface where the object is placed. Okay, example, this one is a box. Okay, the box now is a rest. So that means what is the normal force? Normal force, there's a perpendicular. This one is a surface. So the force is go upwards. Okay, this one is a surface. The force go upwards. This one perpendicular. So we can call it, there's a normal force. Another word, you can call it, there's a normal reaction. So for the object, Suppose you are moving or you are rest, you got two forces acting for you. First one is a normal reaction, another one is a weight. You can refer your notes, they show you one of the books, there's a rest on the table. So the action by two forces, normal reaction go up, another one is a down, there's a weight. Okay, now you can see when the object is moving on the surface, friction, another force, we call it friction. Okay, you can say resistance, you can say about a friction. Let's see a ball. You can pull the ball to move. Okay, if they're on the uneven surface, then you find it, they got friction acting to the ball. So maybe the ball that move becomes slowly. So from here, we call it as a friction force. Okay, refer the diagram that show you that sir, one of the ball is pulling. Okay, so now you're going to see the F, uh, before F, E first. E is an elastic force. Elastic force is a one of the force that allow the object, when you pull, then after you release, you find the object can go back to the original position. So that one we call elastic force. So where we apply, example, spring. When you pull, the spring become longer. When you just release, you find the spring can go back to the original shape. So this one we call reacting the elastic force. Okay, then the spring can show you what's the elastic force. Another one, the usher. Then you can see the diagram there. They pull. After that, they release, that means they can go back to the original shape. Then the last one, there's an S that's called buoyant force. Buoyant force, another word, we call it up thrust force. Up thrust force means they're acting upwards. Okay, where will happen? Okay, let's see the object, they are floating. Floating in the water, so you find it. Down shore is a weight. Every object also got a weight. Down shore is a weight. Now they got one more of the force that move the object go up. They call up thrust. You can call it as a buoyant force. 
So that's why you threw the diagram, you can see the shape that can float it on the sea. Okay, so this one is uh, all of the example of the forces. Okay, but all is the same type. There's a force, but it's a different name. Okay, now we want to see the characteristic. Force is a vector quantities. Okay, vector quantity means they got direction, they also got magnitude. Okay, number two, we need to know what's the unit for the force. Okay, I clean the board first. Okay, now you see the SI unit for the force. Okay, SI unit force is can say about the M. That's a Newton. Okay, we also got the base unit. Because before that, we learned for the chapter 1. Okay, we learned about the force formula is a F equal MA. So, F equal MA, we know the unit support is a kg. And S negative 2. Okay, this one we call it base unit for the force. We also can write as a Newton, capital N. Okay, now we're using what to measure the force. Okay, we're never using the measurement skill. Measurement skill just measure the mass only. So we're using is a spring balance. Okay, spring balance. Okay, you can refer the notes there. Okay, they got diagram. The spring balance is one of the thing here. After that, they got spring. Inside the spring, after that, they'll show you what's the reading. Okay, when they show the reading, that one is in Newton. So I'll show you the diagram, you can see clear what's the Okay, so that one is the spring balance. Okay, now we go to next page, that's about the balance force. Okay, so from here we got two types, one we call balance force, another one we call unbalanced force. So we find it, what is the balance force? Okay, balance force, when the force acting to the object are balanced, they are cancelled to each other. So the net force becomes zero. Okay, example, balance force. Okay, you see the diagram here, for one box, they pull by two forces. One force they go to right hand side, another force they pull to left hand side. When the two forces also acting if the same magnitude, two also, so you find it, total force is how many? Total force equal, two newton, this one is the F1, then you go to minus, okay, we label by F1 first, F1 minus two, F2. Okay, suppose we plus, is it? So normally we're taking the normal force. Normal force is how many? F1 plus F2. So from here, because 1 is the opposite direction, so we just write F1 is a positive, then you plus, then after that, got 2 negative. So final answer, that just left 0 Newton. Okay, when you find it, then a 0 Newton means this one situation, we call it balance force. So this sentence that explains about this situation. Okay, balance force means they are cancelled to each other. Finally, you get the answer force is a 0. So this one we call it net force zero become a uh, net force becomes zero. What means on net? You know the net price. Right? Net price means no, cannot discount already. The one is the last one. So this one net force means after you do the calculation, the last one they become zero. So this one we call net force. Okay, now we're going to see the citation. We got two citation. We can call it as a balance force. Okay, first citation they say the object is rest. One of the box, they are rest. We don't have anything to act in. So we just got one is a weight, another one is a normal reaction. These two must be balanced. Uh, R equal W, also equal zero. So this uh, cannot equal zero because we got weight. Okay, example, the weight is uh, 20 Newton. So that means R also must be 20 Newton. So this one situation, we call it as a balance force. Okay, when the object is rest. So the question don't need to tell you this one balanced or unbalanced. When you just see the question say rest, understood there is a balance. Second situation is constant velocity. Okay, what means of constant velocity? Okay, now we're going to see the graph. This one is a VT graph. Okay, VT graph when the graph is go straight, directly proportional. So now you need to help me to convert become the AT graph. So the AT graph should be like this. 
array. So this one we say velocity increase, acceleration become constant. Okay, now another situation is VT graph, but now it's flat. That means this one is a velocity constant, agree? So velocity constant means the AT graph equal zero. We don't have any acceleration. If you don't have any acceleration, now you tell me what I want to apply the force formula. You don't have any A. A becomes zero. So understood. F also becomes zero. So that in this one is another situation, the force becomes balanced. No forces active. That's a zero. Now what you need to remember is two situations for the balance force. First, rest. The object is rest. Number two, constant velocity. When the question just mentioned constant velocity, mean understood, there's a balance force. Balance force means you need to mention net force equals zero. Okay? Then we go to next one. There's an unbalanced force. Okay, unbalanced force means now the net force cannot become zero. Okay, unbalanced force. Then net force cannot equal to the zero. That means the net force sure finally got value to answer. Okay, now you're going to see the explanation for unbalanced force. When the force acting to an object, they are not balanced when uh, there must be the net force acting on it. Means I draw again the same diagram that a box. Now you are F1 to pull the box. Then the box, you got friction, F2. Okay, if I say this one unbalanced force, means the final net force must equal something. So, understood, we know F1. Sure, because they have to. Because finally, the object can be moved. When the object can be moved, we say there's an unbalance already. If the object cannot move, mean that one is a balance. So from here, I can sure have one bigger than F2. So finally, the object can be moving. So that one, we can say the net force cannot become zero already. You sure got answer. Because F1 bigger than F2, you minus, you sure got one of the value. Okay, now we're going to see the diagram. The diagram that show one of the boy. They're going to pull, move one of the box on the trolley. So from here, this one, we call it unbalanced force. You can say the net force equal how many? The net force equal force applied minus to the resistance of the force or you say friction. So finally, you get the answer. The one we call net force. So from here, there's a F1 minus F2. So you get the answer. Uh, this one also we call the net force. Okay, now force causes a body. Okay, now you apply the force. Now what effect for the body? First one example, they say change the state of the rest. Maybe you are rest. When I apply the force, you're moving fast. That one we call force acting to the object. Number two, state the object is moving. Okay, now the object is moving. Maybe you go to stop the object. The ball is coming. You want to stop the ball. So that means you also apply the force to the ball. Maybe the ball becomes slow down. So that one we also say unbalanced force. So this one is a sum of the situation for the unbalanced force. Okay, next one. We see the Newton law of motion. Okay, Newton law of motion here we got three. So you must remember what's the definition for every Newton law. Because when the question they ask, what is the phenomena we're using for this situation? So you need to say about Newton how many law? Then if they say, please explain the, the law you mentioned just now. So that means you need to explain why is that. So I read first. Okay, number one, that's a Newton first law. Newton first law, they say the object will remain rest. Or they say continue with her goal, uh, constant speed in a straight line. Unless they act by the unbalanced force. Means the object is rest. They want to continue to rest. If they are moving, they want to continue to move it unless you're acting the force to the object. Then, then the object cannot do anything. They must change the situation. So this one is a Newton first law. Okay. Have you listened to this sentence before? Okay, recall back. They almost same like the inertia. Inertia also the definition almost like this. So inertia just one concept. But if you want to ask about overall, 
overall the principle is Newton first law. Okay, so from here Newton first law inside we got chabang. Is it the small step? The small step there's a inertia. Okay, the next one Newton second law. Newton second law is what we need to learn today. Okay, they're talking about the body. Okay, extension of the body directly proportional with the net force. Okay, so from here they give you the definition is extension of the moving body. That's a directly proportional with the force. The force acting. Okay, the force you're acting, that's a directly proportional with the extension, but inversely proportional with the mass. Uh, so from here, this one is a Newton's second law. They're talking about two of the physical quantity relationship with the acceleration. First one, A directly proportional with F. Another one is A inversely proportional with the M. So from here, we can conclude these two things related with the formula of the F. Okay, later we need to learn about this one, Newton's second law. Okay, third law is for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. So any action that require finally what that happened, they must have the equal magnitude but opposite direction. Example, bomb. Okay, explode. When the bomb does explode, when starting, there's a nothing, they never move on. When they explode, here we go there, here we go there. Okay, so the explain is every reaction that will produce the same magnitude. Every magnitude is the same, but in opposite direction. So this one they're talking about Newton third law. From here, this sentence we can create the almost same like the explosion. Before that, we learn momentum. Also, the definition like this: every action that has the equal magnitude but opposite direction. So that one is an explosion. So Newton third law. The main principle is Newton third law, but the concept is explosion. So from here, I already explained the Newton law of motion got three. Please remember it. Okay, the definition and also the concept they're using. Okay, so this one is what we learn. Now I want to take out the Newton second law. So I want to continue for the next lesson about the force. Okay, I can show you something about you can take the notes. Okay, so from here the Newton first law, you can write. That's the concept for the inertia. The second one, you can write the formula for F equal MA. And the third one, Newton third law, you can write about the concept is the explosion. So this one is a small notes. Okay, now we only need to go is a relationship between the force, mass, and also acceleration. So three things are force, mass, and also acceleration. Okay, now you can see the diagram there. Diagram inside the notes. Okay, they show about one of the trolley. Inside the trolley got one of the object. Object means they got mass. Lah. After that, a person, they go to push. Push the trolley. Finally, the trolley got move. So from this situation, actually, they got three things. Force, mass, and also acceleration. When the object got move, we say acceleration. If they move faster and faster, means acceleration increase. Okay, you can use the formula for Newton's second law. Just now they say, Directly proportional with the F. A directly proportional with the F, but A is inversely to the M. So the formula for the force support is an F equal MA. So this is the formula for the Newton's second law. Okay, F stands for the mass applied. Mass means the object. You push the object, the mass is how many? Last one is the acceleration means the object move how fast. So force is a vector quantity, just now I mentioned already, they were direction. So this one force direction will affect the acceleration direction. So how they move, this one the object is depend for this one force. They will follow the force. Okay, now we're going to see the formula finish. Then we see the relationship. We need to draw the graph. Okay, first one they say A directly proportional with the F. So if I plot the graph, F versus A, there should be directly proportional so this one is the first graph okay the second one 
If I draw another graph, then I control the F, I control the mass, I'm using the mass, make the mass become bigger, then acceleration. So in common sense, when something the mass bigger, then you're using the normal force to push, so you find it the object must move slowly. Okay, if the mass become less, you go to push, also using the same force, so you find it they move faster. So that one means acceleration increase. So now the relationship mass and acceleration actually there's an inversely proportional. Okay, when the mass constant, when you do a relationship, one physical quantity must be constant. Or you can write the same directly proportional. I'm going to draw the directly proportional graph. So this one you need to convert one over m, then go straight. So this one become directly proportional. So that's why when we draw the equation, we don't have any inversely proportional equation. We just go directly. So this one you need to convert 1 over m. So from here, the last one, they say the direction of the acceleration. This one direction of the acceleration, that's the same as the direction of the force. When the force you apply, what's the direction? Means the finally acceleration that will follow. So from here, they create the formula F equal MA. Okay, now we can see the one first example question. Okay, we read the question. Okay, from here, they show the diagram. The diagram is one of the boy. Okay, you can see here. Okay, one of the boy, they're going to move 5 kg of the box by using the force is a 30 newton. So from here, they explain for you. Move with the trolley. Okay, now the question they want to ask, what is the magnitude and also direction of the acceleration of the trolley? Okay, they want to know what is the direction of the acceleration and also magnitude of the acceleration. So from here, I clean the board, I show you how to do this. You can refer your diagram. Okay, we write info first. Okay, so the info is the box mass. Is 5 kg. Okay, the next one, the force you're going to apply, there's a 30 newton. Okay, now they ask about acceleration. Okay, later you find the acceleration, they got answer. Then you need to measure magnitude is how many and also what is the direction. If you get positive direction, means what? Positive direction means finally your acceleration is follow the direction of the mass uh, of the force applied by the man. If you find negative, means you now your acceleration is the direction the ballet with the force the man apply. So magnitude means what magnitude means value only. So now we do the calculation by apply the Newton second law. Thirty equal five a. So I find it that a is a six and s magnitude. Okay, positive. So you need to mention this one is a magnitude, then we know already there's a 6, then the direction is what? Direction is same direction as the net force. Okay, the same direction as the net force, that means the force you want to apply. So this one is the question what they need, magnitude and direction. Now we're going to see the example 2. Okay, example 2 got one box, then the box is 4 kg. Okay, pulling by one of the force is 8 newton. Okay, then after that they say 2 newton, there's an acting backwards. Okay, so two forces act horizontally to the block of the wood 4 kg shown in the above figure. Then the acceleration and also direction of motion of the block. Okay, they need to know what is the direction of the acceleration for the block? So when the question asks acceleration, means the box already is moved. Okay, understand? Eh? Because if they ask about, okay, what's the acceleration of the box? Means finally the thing got moved. Lah. So that's why they ask about acceleration. So from here, we apply same formula. F equal MA. The problem here, we got two forces. So two forces, you must go in. You must take either one is positive, either one is negative. Normally, we take the biggest one is a positive value. 
So from here, there's an 8 minus 2. Okay, the mass of the object is a 4. Then you find what is the 8. So your answer for the A, I get it. There's a 6 divided by 4. 6 divided by 4, that is 1.5 and S minus 2. So also same, what's the direction? The direction then move to direction. Then move to the direction of 8 Newton force. Okay, they follow the direction of the forces 8 Newton. So this one is the answer for the second example. Okay, no problem is it? Then we go through to the example 3. Example 3, long a little bit because they got A and also B. Okay, we try to read the question first. Okay, finish, read, is it? Then we go to the example 3. We go to understand the question first. Okay, an object with the mass 2 kilogram is pulled on the floor. Okay, we can draw. Okay, the object is 2 kilograms. Okay, they are on the floor. After that, they pull by a force, 5 newton. Okay, the force is pulling, there's a 5 newton. Okay, having the constant velocity. Just now, I told you, this one is a keyword. Okay, constant velocity, the meaning is A equals 0. Balance force. Agree? Okay, when A equals 0, balance force. The meaning is left, right. The force must be the equal. So that one we call balance force. Okay, so from here, they say the acting fine Newton. Okay, but the object is balance force. So the balance force means sure was something that acting backward. So that's why the object become balance force, is it? If the object, they say rest, okay. In front, behind, nothing. But now they pull 5 Newton, then the object is constant velocity. Means behind, they got one of the friction force acting to the object. Acting how many? Must be same, is it? Balance. So this one sure is a 5 Newton also. So that's why the object can be uh, constant velocity. So from here, let's see the A. What is the frictional force between the object and the floor? So we understood. So your answer A. Pulling force must equal to the frictional force. So that means how many? There's an equal five newton. So we don't need to do any calculation because the keyword already told there's a balance. So that's why we understood. Okay, now we fix our idea. Friction is always five newton. You cannot change one because you are on the floor unless you take the object go another floor. So this one force you can change because you pull. Maybe you pull time already. Up to you. But the friction is a fix. If the situation never change, lah. Now we go B. They say calculate the acceleration of the object if the object pulls 70 Newton. That means now the object got move ready because they ask acceleration. Okay? I change it becomes 70 Newton. This one no more fine. I push 70 Newton. Okay, when I push the 70 Newton, the friction is still the same. 5 Newton. Then they ask you what's the acceleration. So we're using F equal MA. Okay, now the F got 2. 17 go to right, 5 is go to left. So we take the biggest as a positive, we minus the 5. Okay, and the object is 2, then you find what is the acceleration. Okay, so finally I find it the acceleration equal to the 6. And S, then we 2. So this one is the final answer. So this one is the sum of the question they want to catch you. So you might understand the keyword constant velocity. Okay, then we go to the number four. We continue to the number four. Let's see the information first. A bus of the mass two thousand kg. Mass two thousand kg. Example four. Mass is two thousand kg. Travel with the uniform velocity again. Eh? Uniform velocity means constant. 
constant velocity means acceleration equals zero. Okay, the distance travel is how many? Okay, distance travel is 2,500 meter. Then before it comes to rest, finally the velocity will become zero. Then when starting is a constant, after that they become zero. Okay, so now A, average deceleration of the bus. Okay, they ask you total the deceleration of the bus is how many? That means they ask about the A is how many? Because when starting the constant velocity, okay, the constant velocity will be how many? 40. Okay, we write 40 first. U, initial velocity is a 40. Okay, final velocity is equal to the zero. Okay, so from here we need to find out what is the acceleration. Support is a deceleration because when starting you are 40. Okay, after that the last one you become zero, you are slowed up. When you are slowed down, you find it the acceleration, you get it, negative answer. Negative answer means deceleration. So we do the question A first. Okay, we got U, we got V, and after that we got S. Then you need to find the A. Remember the four equation. Now the question is never mention the time. No time. No time means the last equation. V square equal U square plus 2S. So V square is a 0, then the U square is a 40 square, plus 2, A we do know, the S is 2,500. So you find out the A sure got negative answer. So from here, I get it, the A is a negative 0 0.32. So you need to write one more sentence, deceleration equal 0.32 and S negative 2. When you mention deceleration, you don't need to put negative. So this one is the answer. Okay, answer for the A. Then we continue with the B. The average force applied by the brake to bring the bus to stand still. Let me bring the bus to stop. They ask about the force. So when they ask about the force, that means we need to change the formula. Formula for the Newton's second law. Okay, S equal M A. So from here we apply the B. Okay, F equal M A. Okay, this one A, negative means slow down. So we no need to put the negative for the force. We just ignore the negative. Because this one not opposite direction. So from here I apply F equal. Mass is still 2000. Okay, then your A is 0 0.32. So I find it. The force applied is 6,640 uh, Newton. Okay, so this one is the force you want to apply until, apply to where? To, to the brake, until the bus can be stopped. So this one is the force. Okay, so we finish until example 4. We still got one more question, example 5. So you can read first. Okay, example 5. When traveling of the 120 km per hour, a car has to overcome the drag force. Okay, due to the air resistance of 900 Newton. Okay, now they say the resistance. Resistance is about 900. 900 Newton. Okay, if the car has a mass, okay, this one is a car, example, this one is a car, like I just label this one is a car. Okay, friction is here. Resistant. Okay, then they tell you the mass of the car is 1000 kg. Okay, determine the every force. Okay, they ask you about the force. F. Okay, need to apply until the car can be accelerated for the 5 and S married to. Okay, now they just want to ask about the force. You want to apply how many force until the car can be moved with the 5 ms level 2? Okay, you see earlier, earlier they told you they're traveling the 120 km per hour to a car. They overcome the drag force. <coughs> Excuse me. 
Okay, that one, the velocity is not related for this one question because they told you the acceleration already. So now, the question they want to ask is, you apply how many force to overcome this one, finally you can move. Now you tell me which one should be bigger. The resistance become bigger or the force become bigger. Sure is the force become bigger because finally the car got move. Move how many? 5 and S negative 2. So we just apply same formula. Okay, F equal MA. Okay, now we got two forces. One is a force you pull forward, another one is a resistance. But finally, sure the F become bigger. So I do know the F, I just put F, pulling force. Okay, moving force. Then you final, you minus the resistance. Okay, resistance. Then the last one. The mass is how many? Thousand. Then the acceleration for the car is a five. So what you need to find? You need to find the force. The force should be bigger than 900. So I find it. The force is a 5,900 Newton. So when you apply this on force, you overcome the friction. After that, you can move how fast? The acceleration is a 5 ms, negative 2. So this one is an answer for question example 5. Okay, easy only, is it? Okay, then we can go through about the experiment. So this one topic, we got two experiments you need to do for the PKS. So from here, I explain first what is the relationship because we're using the formula F equal MA. So F equal MA just now, I show you got two relationships. One is directly proportional, one is inversely. So that means you need to do two report about this formula. Okay, so I'll like explain later. Huh? You see the diagram first. Okay, what is the difference for the boy A and boy B? Okay, can you see the boy A and B? Okay, they say both men also pushing the same of the mass. Okay, just got one box. Okay, men A, they put greater effort. Means they move the force. Apply the force is higher compared to the another boy. So you find it, they move faster. So this one, what constant? The mass become constant. So, relationship between the force and also acceleration. Okay, understand the diagram. Eh? So, now we need to see the experiment. Okay, experiment, the first one will be start with the inference. So, you can see here the format. You refer the textbook. The textbook, they will show you the format how to write this one report. They also show you the diagram, how to draw it. Okay, now I clean the board. Later, we one by one to discuss. Okay, now we can see the first one, there's an inference. Okay, we fit first. Just now we say what? Mass become constant, is it? Okay, constant. Okay, then the relationship is the F and also the acceleration. So from here, hypothesis. So normally what we can control? We control is a force lah. We apply how many force. So from here, the hypothesis, uh, the inference first, acceleration depends on the force applied. So normally, how to write the inference? You must write about the RV. It depends on the MB. So from here, it's a, uh, acceleration depends on the force. So hypothesis is when the force, uh, when the, when the force increase. So you, you, Control the force is it. So when the force increase, then the acceleration half. The acceleration also increase. Then you must mention when the mass is a constant. So that why it's a hypothesis. Okay, after that is the aim to investigate relationship between okay, both you can put either one first also can. Relationship between the force and also the acceleration. Okay, then the next one is a uh, variable. So variable, this one become manipulate variable, force applied. Responding variable is acceleration. Then constant variable should be the mass. Okay, now we're going to see the apparatus. Apparatus follow your textbook they got mentioned, must using the ticker timer. Ticker timer means you must together with the power supply. Ticker timer, power supply must using the AC power supply. Then you must have the trolley. Ticker timer together with the ticker tag. Then trolley, elastic band. 
okay elastic band just like one of the rubber band this one is represent by force because we do not apply how many force you using your hand to push you also do not how many force so we're using one elastic band holding to the trolley then you pull uh, when you pull that means that one means one force if i'm using two elastic band i pull uh, that means the force becomes strong already so i using the elastic band represent the force is how many okay after that they're using the runway then wooden block wooden block normally we want to lift the runway become higher than the trolley can come down ticker tape okay cellophane tape you help me to add one more that's a meter root that's a important because meter root later you want to measure the tap then you need to count acceleration okay now you can refer the diagram in your textbook also got okay that's the they show you all the diagram how to draw it important you need to label Okay, I already marked for you. This one is an important. That's an elastic band. You must show in the diagram. So now I show you the diagram, the big diagram. Also same like your textbook. Okay, can you see clear the diagram. Okay, now we're going to see proceeding. Okay, first proceeding must be set up. All the pattern is set up as above diagram. So that means your diagram must draw properly. Lah. Number two, the ticker tag is attached to the trolley and passed through the ticker timer. Okay, number three, you must say switch off. You must switch on your power supply. After switch on, please help me to underline the keyword pull down. Because pull down is some of the force. You cannot write release. Release means no force. You must say pull down. After that, using how many elastic band? An elastic band means one elastic band. So you say pull down. After that, an elastic band. Okay, after that, we go to the number four. They say the ticker tape is divided. After you pull down the ticker tape, finish. Lah. So you need to divide it into the strip. Each strip con uh, containing for the 10 ticks. So after that, how we do the calculation? You must show the calculation, how you count the acceleration. So you must say the ticker tape chart is construct. After they form the chart, and acceleration for the uh, trolley is calculated by using formula. Important, you don't need to write so many. You just mention acceleration is calculated by the formula V minus U over T. That's all. Then after that, we need to repeat the experiment by using 2, 3, 4, and 5 elastic. Back. So your marks, procedure got three marks. How to get the procedure marks? First one you mentioned, you're using uh, an elastic band. That one is one mark for manipulate variable. Responding mark a little bit hard, you want to get it. You see how to get it. Huh? First, you need to mention switch on. Number two, you must mention pull down. And the third one, you need to show A equal V minus U over T. And then you get responding marks. Then the third mark, how you get it? Repeat. Minimum four set. Okay, you need to mention what is the number. Okay, just now it's one elastic band, is it? Now you continue two, three, four, and five elastic band. So you get repeated marks. So that one is a three mark for the procedure. Then after that is a tablet data. Tablet data, you just draw the table. After that, you must have the symbol, you must have the unit for the force and also the uh, acceleration. Last one is uh, analyzing. Analyzing means you need to sketch, not draw in the graph paper, sketch only. So from here, you just draw the, the y-axis and x-axis, after that you go to label. F is the uh, x-axis, A is the uh, y-axis, then no need to plot. If you plot, you make sure you are correct. If you plot the wrong thing, they will minus your mark. So better we just empty. Because we never do experiment, we do know the result. So this one is an example report for the question. Okay. Okay, then we got another experiment. This one is a just now. F versus A. Another one is a uh, you see the investigate relationship between the mass and acceleration. Mass versus acceleration. Okay, when the force now is constant. Okay, this one is a, another experiment. Okay, they also got a diagram. In the textbook, also got a diagram. You can refer the diagram here. I will show you. 
Can you see they got two trolley? They are put together. Then they're using the two elastic band to pull it down. Okay, see clear? Huh? Okay, that one is uh, another experiment. That's related with the force, constant, mass versus acceleration. All the thing is the same. All the pattern is the same. So I repeat one pattern for you. The diagram you need to draw about the two trolley. Okay, a pattern set up. Then number two also the same. Number three, you need to mention pull down the uh, trolley. You must mention one trolley first. Using how many band? Okay, an elastic band. A uh, trolley, yeah? Okay, number four, also same. You find acceleration. Okay, now repeated is a different. Repeated, you just say repeat by using two, three, four, and five trolley. So this one is a different for the mass versus acceleration when the force constant. Force constant means you're using how many elastic band. That one constant, no need to repeat. So from here, finally, from here, the table. Okay, normally this one experiment we cannot do for the PKS. They just want our activity. We cannot do this a full experiment hypothesis because we cannot do for five trolley. Five trolley too much already. You need to step. Then the trolley too high, they cannot come down together. They will fall down. So from here, we maximum just can do three unit. Three unit cannot plot the graph. So from here, we assume this one is a category B for the experiment. This one is a category A. This one is a B only. So we just do the experiment but cannot plot graph. You can write the uh, relationship but you cannot plot the graph. So from here, we can know the relationship. Lah. Okay, when the force constant, I apply two Newton. Okay, one is a heavy thing. Another one is a lighter thing. So which one easy to move? Sure, it's a lighter one. So that's why we find it. When the mass increase, acceleration will become decreases so that one is a relationship so finish they got two experiment okay so from here we got tutorial question okay you need to complete the tutorial so i will show you the answer for the tutorial also so now you can see a while for your tutorial question i clean the board and then after that i show you the answer okay